Hey guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Parker Emerald, and this is The Conversation Station. Today's guest is a successful entrepreneur, podcaster, and speaker who has a passion for building better relationships. He is founder and CEO of Guestio, a platform that connects high-profile guests and platforms for interviews. He is also the host of Travis Makes Friends, a podcast that features inspiring stories and insights from top performers in various fields. Travis believes in the power of interview marketing, which he defines as using interviews to create content, connections, and credibility. He has interviewed influential guests such as Grant Cardone, Patrick Bet David, Shaquille O'Neal, and many more. Travis's mission is to help 1 million people leverage interview marketing to grow their businesses and personal brands. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to entrepreneur and podcast extraordinaire, Mr. Travis Chappelle. Welcome on, sir. Hey, what's up, dude? Thanks so much for the awesome intro and for having me on the show. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really excited. I mean, um, I I mean, since you came on uh, on the Apogee call, it, it it was really exciting to uh, hear from a from a very successful podcaster. Um, I definitely think it, podcasting is such a growing market. Um, it's it's one of those things that is growing so much right now and i i i mean every i love everything you're doing i uh love guestio i hopped on there i haven't haven't used it to schedule anyone yet but like i love going on there like oh wow i can get this guy on you know it's yeah. it's exciting yeah well thanks for the thanks for the kind words man i, I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time to bring me on and yeah i agree the podcasting industry is an exciting one and it's done a lot of great things in my life so i'm happy to give back to anybody that's trying to figure it out for themselves as well yeah. So why don't you just start off, give the, uh, the audience a bit of an overview of, you know, who is Travis and how, how has he become who he is today? What, uh, what does this journey look like? Sure, man. So I, uh, <clears throat> grew up in a really kind of religious community. I thought I was going to go into full-time ministry, but by the time I graduated college with my Bible degree, I basically figured out I didn't really want to go down that path of full-time ministry. So um, then I had a, uh, I tell people it was a useless degree turned even more useless. It was like a, a regular Bible degree doesn't really do much for you in real life. Um, but an unaccredited Bible degree does even less for you than, than a regular Bible degree. And, uh, so I was, you know, I just had a quote unquote degree. I spent four years in college and got out and was no closer to, you know, having a career than when I went into college. So I uh, did the only thing I knew how to do, which was door to door sales. Did that for five or six years. Eventually just got burnt out, wanted to learn how to make money online because I liked the idea of being able to leave and travel and go places and still be able to make money while I was gone. So I uh, I got in, I got into that world. I started podcasting uh, five and a half years ago now, almost six years, which is crazy. And, uh, and then, yeah, that led to multiple things that led to coaching, consulting and courses, kind of events, mastermind business all around podcasting, creating content. And then uh, we started a software company called Guestio, and then we have an agency on the back end of that software company called Guestio Concierge. Um, and then, yeah, I got a couple other cool projects in the pipeline. We've never missed a beat with the podcast in the meantime, and just had an awesome rebrand of the show from Build Your Network to Travis Makes Friends earlier on this year. And so we're super stoked for a lot of the interviews and episodes we got coming out on that. Um, yeah, man, lots of good things. No, 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 no complaints. Um, you know, it's all, it's all. Um, it's all things that I would have asked for, you know, a few years ago, even, even when I'm get stressed, even when I get anxious, even when I, you know, I'm experiencing some of the difficult parts of, of growth. Um, I know that it's exactly where I need to be. Yeah. I think that's, that's one of the fun parts with the media and all this stuff is there's, there's so much growth that needs to happen to be successful. But I, I think one of the things that helps when you're, when you're going through this growth, going through these pain points is as long as you're being consistent with the content, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, how, no matter, no matter how the content looks, as long as you're being consistent, I think it, at least on my end, it, that's what provides me the motivation. Like if I put out a piece of content, I don't like the, the, the part the, the thing is, is I'm like, okay, that could have been better, but guess what? I get to do it again tomorrow. And, right. and you just keep going. Um, and I, I just, I just think it's, it's crazy to see, um, these, the, the podcast, I'm mean, these podcasts grow. I mean, I've only been doing mine a year. Um, but in that year I've gotten to talk to a bunch of, a uh, bunch of incredible people. And I mean, you yourself, you've gotten to talk to, you know, all of the successful people I'm, uh, I mentioned earlier and many others like like i mean getting to talk to shack is like one of those things that i think every person that has ever listened to shack talk probably wants to talk to him he seems like a really uh great guy and it's it was a really great uh interview when i was taking a listen 
Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I unfortunately didn't get as much time as I really wanted, but I ended up actually stretching it into more time than they were originally giving me. Uh, but I, I, I would like to do a part two with them at some point in person and get a little bit longer uh, with the guy. But yeah, for me, it was a, it was a huge full circle moment because I mean, he's, he's larger than life and he's Shaq and everybody knows him and it would, it would have been a total win um, just knowing all of that by itself. But for me, it was particularly, I think, important because uh, he was he was like my childhood hero, dude. Like when I was a kid, I was watching the Shaq and Kobe Lakers, you know, 2000, 2001, uh, time period. And, uh, uh, Shaq was my favorite player on that team. I like, it was my, my buddy and I would play basketball all the time. I played a ton of basketball growing up. My buddy and I would play basketball in the driveway. You know, we'd lower down the hoop, uh, to, to be able to dunk and stuff when we were, when we were kids. And I had a Shaq Jersey. My buddy had a Kobe Jersey and we'd go out there and pretend we were Shaq and Kobe for hours, you know? So, I had bobbleheads and jerseys and all these other things and paraphernalia that all, you know, came from, uh, uh, from Shaq. And so when I started my podcast, he was the first name that I wrote down, like people that I wanted to talk to on my show. So it was, it was not only cool just to be able to talk to him because he's him, but also just because it was somebody that I looked up to for such a long period of time, um, both in basketball and then, and then in his personal life, I just have a lot of respect for the way that he conducts himself in the world, the way that he, uh, you know, uh, seemingly parents, his kids, the way that he shows up as a business owner, as a, as a commentator, as a host, as a friend, um, uh, even, even as a uh, philanthropist and somebody that's constantly giving back and things. So, um, yeah, I, I was, it was a very, very enjoyable interview. Um, even, even though it was only 15, 20 minutes, but had a great time with them. And I think that opened the door for other potential possibilities because now we've kind of messaged a couple of times on Instagram. He follows me on Instagram. So the, the podcast is like, it's the, it's the Trojan horse, man, is what I tell people. It's the, it's the foot in the door that allows you to speak to people that you never thought would give you any time. Hey, man, that's that's exactly how it is over here. Um, I, that's that's one of the things when I talk about podcasting, it's it's for me, it's less about the views. I mean, hey, getting getting 20 listens an episode is nice, but but that's that's not what it's about. Yeah, I like being able to provide value to my audience and talk. And, but but that's what it is. It is a networking tool because bef before running the podcast, I wouldn't have had the chance to sit down one on one with some of these guys. Yeah, a lot of the guys I've had on, I've gotten to talk to through the Apogee program, but I wouldn't have gotten that one-on-one -on -one connection, which is vastly more valuable than any than than what I could get from the Apogee calls because I get to ask my questions and guide the conversation for myself, and so that's that's what's exciting to me, especially as it and as it's developed. I'm to the point where I have some uh one of my mentors, Mr. Rodney Farrell. Um, he uh, huge network, you know, just uh, one of these guys who who's a real mover and shaker, uh, runs a media business, just uh, an incredible guy. But now he's like, he's uh, schedule. he's uh, calling up people in his network and telling them to get on my podcast. And it's like the, nice. the, the networking side of things is the part that it, that has, it, it is the most rewarding part of podcasting as a whole. Yeah. I think it's potentially the number one reason to start. You know, because <clears throat> to me, it's like if you ever want to have a show, just get started and start interviewing people because you're going to realize the benefits of uh, having the conversations before you realize the benefits of having a ton of downloads. Now, if you can do both, fantastic. Obviously, it's way better to get a ton of downloads, but um, it's nice to know that even like to me, when I'm when I'm starting in any new venture, I want to know the risk and I want to know the reward and I want to be able to weigh those things effectively. And I think that's a huge part of decision making uh, to ask yourself, hey, what's the worst case scenario here? What's my biggest risk in doing this? And in a lot of things, there's zero sum games. You win or you lose. And those ventures are intrinsically more risky. Whereas podcasting is one of those things where it's just like, if you get started, you're going to receive some sort of benefit if you do it for a long enough period of time. Like it's just, you're going to get some benefit. I don't, it, 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 I don't know if it's going to be downloads. I don't know if it's going to be sponsorship revenue. I don't know if it's going to be YouTube views or, you know, micro fame, as they may say. I, I don't know what it's going to be or if, if, if any of those things are going to happen. But I know for sure that if you interview one person a week for 52 weeks for an entire year, that you will realize the benefits of having a podcast uh, because <clears throat> there's no way that it doesn't positively benefit your life in some sort of a way. And then yeah. all the other things are just kind of like, man, if that happens, I mean, what a cool way to make a living. But if it doesn't happen, worst case, especially for somebody like you, man, which is why I was happy to come on your show. You know, you're so young and you have um, uh, so much at your fingertips and you have, you have a, a long future ahead of you that being able to establish relationships with 
uh, people that are operating on a really high level at your age um, is a, a, you know, invaluable, invaluable piece of the learning process. And, you know, good on, good on Matt uh, Bodro and, and the FG program and everybody for exposing you to those types of things and teaching you these kind of, uh, these third party ways of learning and, and seeing success for yourself in life. Because, you know, most, most systems don't teach you these kinds of, these kinds of, uh, these kinds of things, these types of opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I started my podcast, um, it came from a push from uh, from Rod from Rodney. Um, he came up here to because he, he's good friends with my parents. They've known each other for like twenty years. He came up here to just uh, stay with us and you know go hang out. And and I told him because I had come up with the name, the Conversation Station. It, it's a. It, I think that's one of the one of one of the leg legs up I have. I have a really really good name. Um, but uh, and I just uh, said that to him and he's one of those guys that could that could sell you a a poop a poop covered toothbrush you know he he, he'll make he can get you to do anything um and so he was like let's do it and so then like a week later i recorded that first episode uh recorded a couple more and then um recorded one episode that i wasn't that happy with right Mm -hmm. And then I didn't, and then I didn't, I did, I, I, I just like, wasn't that excited to edit it, you know, didn't, didn't release that episode for like six months. So no podcast for six months yeah. and then, um, got a bit of a wake up call. Like, come on, man, you know, started to look at it as a, look at it a bit differently. Look at it as more of that networking tool, released that episode, got on a more consistent schedule. It was one, it started one every couple of weeks and now it's been one a week and starting to get things scheduled out into the future. And I think that that it it was that perspective shift from I want to get views, you know, I want to get views. Don't get me wrong. I want to get downloads. I want to I want to be able to impact people. But I think the biggest impact where you should focus is the impact you can have on on yourself and the people you're talking to, because that's that's at the end of the day. That's all that's really important. Well, yeah. And you got to start somewhere. Yeah. You know, if you if you want a ton of downloads or views. Like if you kept doing, like how old are you? I'm uh, 16. So if you're, you did this for the next 14 years of your life, how many thousands of conversations is that with extremely successful people? How many reps have you put in? How, ma- how many times have you asked people good questions? How much better have you gotten at your communication ability, at your ability to connect with people, your ability to have empathy, your ability to lead, your ability to communicate? How, how much better are you by the time you're 30 if you do this for the next 14 years? And that if you do it for that long and you do it that consistently, you will have an audience by the end of it. Now, how big it is, I don't know. But you will have one, absolutely, for sure, 100%, no doubt about it. You know, because the consistency and effort over a long period of time is what's going to bring you the results that you want. And at your age, you have this massive advantage to be able to do this and wake up and still be super, super young. You know, in 14 years, like I look at myself as being pretty young because I'm 30, but compared to you, like I'm almost twice your age at this point. So the amount of reps that you can put in between now and the time that you're my age on doing something like this, the number of people that you can talk to, like the, uh, in, in the likelihood that your YouTube views or your podcast downloads are going to be significantly higher by that time period right, is extremely high uh, because you're, 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 you put in the reps now and you put in the work. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at, um, I mean, if I look at over the last three months, right, the, these three months have been the most consistent three months of podcasting. And I listened to some of these interviews from a few months ago and I'm like, I didn't know. I, it, when I tried to turn the conversation in a direction, it was very forced, but now it's like I can navigate that and that, and it, it, you, you can see the improvement in just a couple of months. And, and then I also think that there's, there's this, um, the other side to podcasting is that you have, um, the, the, the podcast is, you know, a half hour to an hour where you get to talk to people and it is not just content for YouTube or your podcast platforms. That's why video bo- podcasts have exploded because all of these other social media platforms, it gives you content there. I mean, obviously these platforms like it when you make content that is focused for social media, like my, my video I made on some tools for podcasters that was made for social media did better than most of my clips do. But at the end of the day, the algorithms care more about consistency. And then the other thing is for me, starting young, 
I, I have, I have the advantage of the consistency, but I also have the advantage of, of the fact that at 16, there are a heck of a lot less 16 year old podcasters than there are 30 year old podcasters. So when I reach out to a guest, m- one of the things that makes me unique is the fact that I am not 30. I'm 16 reaching out to these guests. I've had a couple of guests come on who have, who have said to me, they're like, I get a bunch of, uh, asks to come on podcasts. But d- rarely, if ever, do I get a, a request from a 16-year-old. And so it is, it is recognizing that age c- can be a disadvantage, but if you leverage your age, it can be one of the biggest advantages you can have. Yeah, it's a disadvantage or an advantage, just depending on how you look at it. And yeah, if you, if you look at it as a disadvantage, you're going to find the reasons that it's why it's a disadvantage. If you look at it like an advantage, then you're going to find the reasons why it's an advantage. And uh, that's what you're doing, man. So congrats on doing that and, 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 you know, keep up the good work because it is, it is truly an advantage. Um, there's going to, you know, it, it's, it's just different. It's different. If you're, if you're in your forties, then you have to have a ton of other credibility when you reach out to these people. When you're 16, if you leverage that effectively, then yeah, there's going to be a bunch of people like, including me that, that come on your show just because they see a young, uh, ambitious, well-spoken kid who wants to do good in the world, improve himself and those around him. And people, people want to, people want to help, you know, people who have walked the road a little bit further down a little bit further, you know, they want to help as long as you always have that attitude of like complete self-awareness and understanding that they're like, Hey, you're giving me your time. And I appreciate that. And I'm not in a position to like, you know, demand that of you, but I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, you know what I mean? Like if you, if you always come across with that, that spirit of like self-awareness and that spirit of look like, look, I'm just, I'm a kid. I'm just trying to learn as much as I can from amazing people like you. And I've been following your stuff and I love this thing about you. I would love to be able to ask you some questions that I have. You know, I, I think you're, you're, you're going to continue having really great results with that. Absolutely. And I mean, basically what you just described is my pitch to every single guest. It's, and my other, my other thing that I use to stand out is I don't, um, uh, I don't know if I, if I sent you an audio message, but I've been sending people audio messages as opposed to long spiels Mm -hmm. because it, it creates this unique thing where they take a listen and it's a person. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not text that you read and, 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 uh, the, the tonality is up to your own interpretation. Um, and so that 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 can help to set yourself apart by by using audio messages and there's a lot of little things you can do and i think the number one thing though is expressing that gratitude expressing that that it would be an honor you know i i'm asking for your time i um you know you have to you have to leverage that to your advantage you've got to you've got to really express the fact that you know this is you are, you are doing me a huge favor um thank you you know just 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 being as as grateful as possible, it it, it creates this um, it, it creates this effect that, that, and this uh, communication uh, style that is that is rare to see these days. Sure, yeah, no, I, I yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Keep it up, dude. Keep it yeah. up. So I want to. Um, I just I okay. Let's let's see. So one of the. One of the questions I want to ask you, because I'm curious, um, your take on this is how do you, f- what is your, res- what is your response? What do you feel? You know, what is your take when you see, you know, hate comments? Cause everybody gets hate comments, you know? Um, I, I, I personally have my own outlook, which is the fact that, Hey, the people that are succeeding want to see you succeed. The, 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 the people that, that have, that have walked the road of the leader want to see other leaders lead. And so when I, when I get a hate comment, I, I just look at it and i'm like hey this person might not be in the greatest spot you know it's not it's not and it's not my uh i I don't concern myself with it i think that one of the best ways you can respond to hate comments is with empathy and so when when someone leaves a hate comment saying uh you know nothing um you know you haven't lived long enough i'm just like um uh, you know, thank you for the feedback. Even if it's, t- even if it's purely from a place of hate, I saw this from Nick Kumulatsos. He was saying that someone left a comment saying dislike, and he just responded to the comment saying, um, no problem. I'll give you a like. And he gave the guy's comment a like, and the guy messaged him a year later saying that that comment, that response stuck, stuck in his head for an entire year, that, that moment of empathy stuck in his head for an entire year. So I think the best way that in my opinion, you can respond to hate comments is with empathy, but what's your take on all that? Yeah, I would agree. Most, for the most part, you know, some people are, 
some people are lost causes and sometimes I like to have fun with those people and, um, and poke the bear a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's not recommended, you know, the, the recommended answer is for sure. More of the empathy side. And I've always gotten better results when I've, when I've taken that approach. Um, but like I said, sometimes I like to have fun with people who are just being mean <laughs> for the sake of being mean. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but for the most part, yeah, I, I, I tend to respond pretty much like that. Like, Hey, thanks for your opinion. You know, as long as we agree that that's all it is, <laughs> it's like your, your opinion's your opinion. My opinion's mine. I'm sharing mine. You're not sharing yours. So it's easier for you to come, come comment on my opinion that I'm sharing openly. Uh, when you're not going to share one openly, you're just going to come find people who you disagree with and comment hate on their posts. So yeah. And most of, most of the time you're right there. There's no, there's nobody that's in a healthy mental state that's going around and commenting hate on other people's stuff. There, there's something that's going on inside. There's something that's going on in their personal life. There's an experience that they had that tells them that this type of thing that you are promoting is a thing that's going to cause harm. And so they, they have, they, they feel they, they become almost like evangelists about it. Um, so yeah, most of the time it's, it's on them. It's not on you and there's not much you can do about it. And, uh, you know, dwelling on it is not a appropriate use of time, even though sometimes like it logically it makes sense. But when I get like really bad hate comments, I, it, it doesn't, it still doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? Like you're putting a lot of work and effort into something and then somebody comments something that's just completely tearing you down. It still doesn't, it's not something that's like, oh, I'm looking forward to the next hate comment. It's like, ah, oh, that sucks. Um, yeah. But you know, what's the alternative? The alternative is never say anything ever that you believe in so that you can always make sure that you're, you know, agreeing with as many people as possible. And it's just like not a, it's never going to work. There will always be people, be people that disagree with you and hate on you. So the only alternative is to live life sheepishly because you're too afraid of being made fun of to live life boldly. And that's not an option for me. So the only option is to move forward and deal with the hate that comes along with it because it's going to come. If you do anything, anything at all that is completely out of the normal, out of the ordinary, you want to do anything extraordinary, anything above average, there will be hate. It is not a matter of if. It's a matter of when and how much it's not, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, if you are in the social media podcasting, you know, online space, it might be a little bit more apparent because you're giving, like I said, you're, you're giving opinion freely, openly, and you're giving more of an opportunity for people to, to engage and comment directly with the material that you're putting out there. Um, but a lot of times that's a really good sign that you're talking about some decent stuff. If you're getting a ton of that engagement, um, uh, but you know, so there's other people that, that aren't on social or on new podcast or YouTube, but they're still getting hate. If they're doing anything big, they're still going to have, if they're, you know, running a, whatever, and $7 million print on demand company in, you know, Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, and you're the only one of your friends that does that. And everybody else is working at the factory. Those, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to talk crap about you. They're going to say bad things about you. They're going to hate on you because you figured out a way to do things that's different than the regular way to do things. And it goes against conventional wisdom. And a lot of people, especially those that feel like they have that itch, but never decided to scratch it. A lot of those people can't deal with the fact that you decided to scratch it and you figured it out, at least to some extent, and are living a version of life that they want to live. So they have to find all these reasons to blame, uh, these excuses to put it on that say, you know, hey, you, th well, of course that, of course this person's successful because they're just whatever, they're greedy or they're, 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 they're mean or they're selfish or they don't <laughs> like people or they like, they prioritize money over friends. Like they're, they're just, they're going to find things to talk about. If you do anything that's out of the ordinary and have any sort of success, it's going to be part of the journey. No matter if you're on social, you've never, or you've never been on a social media site in your life, it's going to come. It's just a matter of when and how much. So you have to learn how to deal with it at some point. Or like I said, just retreat, retreat and do nothing. That's the only yeah. other option, which is not an option for me and for anybody that wants to do anything big. Absolutely. And so my, my, my other thing, which helps me when be like, well, especially when the hate is just hating to hate and there's no, there's no real thought behind it. When there's thought behind it, I, I really like looking at it. I'm like, okay, this person's sharing their perspective. There's some thought. But one of the other things is when someone's just hating and like calling me an idiot because I'm 16 years old. Sure. Um, and, yeah, well, and then, I, and then I look at my, my comment section. I'm like, okay, wait, I have five comments. They're all hate comments, but guess what? If they weren't hate comments, I wouldn't have comments. And so I'm like, okay, wait, the algorithm wants engagement. If, if you're going to, if you're going to hate, leave a comment. That's, that, that's basically my, my take on hate comments. Um, especially as a smaller creator is if you're going to hate on me, leave a comment and the algorithm will reward me for you hating. So hate all you want. Just make sure to leave a comment. Yeah. Just make it public. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh is, man, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, the that that's the thing, man, is that you know those um, there's a difference between disagreement and hate. There's a lot of people that disagree, and they'll comment disagreeing comments. That's completely different to me. Yeah, like what you're saying, what you're saying is a hate comment, where it's just like they don't give you the time of day, they don't give you a chance, or like you know maybe just because of uh, like I, I gave an opinion on uh, politics one time, a very very neutral opinion because I do not talk about politics on my channels yeah. very often, and I I just was saying something about how like um, you know I just I, I don't engage a lot in politics because I don't find that it has much bearing over my everyday life as much as much control as I have anyway. And, um, yeah, I got a bunch of people, random people that commented on it saying how, um, how, how white of a take it was and like, oh, coming from a, from a, coming from a white guy or whatever. <laughs> it was like all these random stuff. Like, it's like some of that stuff is just like, okay, well, this is just, these are just hate comments. But there's some people that left thoughtful comments on there about how, Absolutely. You know, like, hey, you, I, I disagree with you and here's why. And like those things I'll, I'll take into consideration. And there was a couple that on there that was like, no, oh, that's a, that's a fair point. It's a fair perspective. And had I, you know, been raised the same way that you were raised or grown up in the same world that you grew up in, I might have a similar perspective to that. I don't, I still think that like, and it's hard, it's hard, obviously in a 30 second video to provide a ton of context around something you believe. So there's a lot 100%. of people taking what I said out of context. Um, and so I was trying to like, you know, do a little bit of damage control on that end. But, uh, but yeah, there's a difference between disagreement and hate and there are both of them out there. Um, but I would rather engage with the the disagreement people than the hate people. Definitely, and so I, I, I uh, one of one of my guests who lives in that world was was talking about uh, reparations and some of the push for that. And so I put it out as a clip because he he was t and 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 there was someone uh, some people who just left hate to hate, but then someone said with all due respect, and then wrote a well a well spoken paragraph about why they disagreed with him. And I was like, hey, mm -hmm. good on you. I mean, like in that situation, it's it it wasn't my opinion, and so. I I, I mean, I, I didn't reply to the comment or anything because it's not my place to reply. You know, I'm not the person who is even speaking in the video. Um, and so I, I look at it from from the fact that, hey, if you give me a well-spoken uh, comment and you're disagreeing with me, I, I, I love conversation. And it's like, OK, if you give me something to think about, I'd, I'd love to sit back and think about it and compare it versus my own perspective, as, as that's one of the most important parts of leadership is going to war with your own ideas. Well, and the reason for conversation well, yeah. that's the reason to have conversation that's why i talked to on my show i talked to a lot of people that some people would say that i shouldn't talk to um you know give them a platform or whatever but I, I i just am not in that i'm not under that thinking to me it's like if if i bring on people if i only ever talk to people that i agree with where's the challenge in that how, how, do, how do i know that my ideas are right if i'm only ever bringing people on who agree with all of my ideas that doesn't make any sense. That's not yeah. a conversation. You have to you have to find people that are going to challenge them, and you have to find people that are going to challenge them uh, uh, thoughtfully and effectively, not just people who are going to, you know, cuss you out just because you disagree with them on something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you know thoughtful conversation with real empathetic people on the other side of the aisle that have a different perspective and can back up and defend that perspective at least to a certain degree. Like that to me is the basis of conversation and the reason to continue having those conversations. And that's why I bring on whoever on my podcast. Uh, and as long as they, like my, my main thing is like, you got to have a different story. You can't just like, if you're, if you, if you followed the traditional path, I don't bring a lot of those people on my show. Um, just because a lot of people know that that path works. I'm trying to highlight these unconventional paths even if it's something that I might disagree with, even from like a moral standpoint um, or a, a value standpoint, it might be something that I would be like, hey, I, I as a whole, like would not encourage my kids to do what you do or to take the path that you took. But I still enjoy the conversation and I still think it's worth like trying to hear your perspective and have some empathy for your side. Um, and maybe you might challenge some of my thinking. And, uh, you know, that's what real thought and real conversation should do. 100% I couldn't agree more that's that is my uh, that that is how I how I do it with my guests like I don't have to agree with you in any way shape or form but I have to see that you are that you are willing to have a conversation around your view mm -hmm. um, and and I, I think what you were saying earlier about politics there's one one episode where we I talked about some some edgier topics but I I had I I, I had to deep politicize it as much as possible politics mm. is the most scary thing to talk about online because it is so alienating 
dominating, which mm-hmm. is one of the issues I see with the world today, um, is, is the black or white when the entire world is gray. Mm-hmm. But I, mm-hmm. I, I think that, um, I think it is, it is important to, yeah, I mean, that's, that is the basis of conversation. Like you were saying, it is, it is challenging your own ideas, you know, bringing new perspectives to the table. And I, and that's another thing you were talking about. I love highlighting the unconventional path because my, my path currently is anything but conventional. I'm homeschooled, you know, all I do, my, my, my schooling is, is talking to people, doing business stuff. It, it, it is completely, uh, opposite from from the the average path not necessarily the average path but the the path that has been told to us by society as normal it, mm-hmm. it is so vastly different that i think it's it's fun to highlight other people doing that but then it's also nice to every once in a while bring someone on who has done the traditional path every once in a while but my focus sure. is on these these successful people who have taken their own their own approach and i think that the, most of the wildly successful people you come across have done something different from everyone else. That's how they separated themselves. Yeah, no, I, yeah, totally agree. That's the, that's, that's the purpose of our show for sure. It's just to go find people that have done interesting things and have interesting conversations with them. Absolutely. Um, I guess we should wrap things up. I got to respect your time as much as possible, but um, thank you so much for coming on here. I'm so glad we got to do this. Appreciate it, Parker. Thanks so much for having me, man. Keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you guys at home for watching. I've been talking to Travis Chappelle, and this has been The Conversation Station. 